Uh oh. Uh, right here, you do have that, and we'll just uh, ignore that for a second. <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit. And welcome back to Janky AF. Now, if you saw my other video on my brand new, uh, to me, 1993 Ford Aerostar, I said, well, just ignore this spot right here. There's nothing to see. It's just a little surface rust. Well, it might be a slightly bigger problem than that. Well, after waiting almost six months and on the eve of our anticipated departure, I said, well, I should probably go get the Aerostar inspected before I drive all this way home, four hours about. And uh, of course, when I took it to get inspected, the friendly, kindly gentleman there told me, uh, your frame is cracked in two spots because of rust. And being the idiot that I am, of course, I, I got in such a, a hussy to buy this car. I did look at it in person before I bought it. But, you know, as you do, you kind of want something and you just, uh, you know, figure out a way to get it. And uh, I looked under the car. Now, most of it is clean, as you'll see from some of this footage I took for a, you know, almost 30-year-old car that lived most of its life in Ohio. It is uh, fairly clean underneath. But, uh, again, being the idiot I am and not someone who's uh, familiar with, uh, you know, the specifics of vehicles having, even though I own so many of them, I decided, ah, uh, yeah, 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 let's just buy it, you know. <laughs> so here we are, and uh, it looks so clean on the outside, but obviously there are some issues that, uh, with it. So instead of uh, driving uh, all the way home, we're going to make sort of an unscheduled stop at uh, the beautiful welding shop here in Buffalo, New York, and they're going to tell us uh, just how bad it is. So here we go. Um, turn on the engine here. Now it does roar to life. It's a little loud. It does obviously needs a little exhaust work, but uh, apparently that's not the only thing on the undercarriage of the vehicle that is uh, starting to go, shall we say. Let's snap in my cute little seat belt here. This is kind of a two two hand operation. Beautiful seat belt buckles, don't you think? So we're gonna pop her in, and uh, you know, slight lurch there when we go backwards, and. Uh, here we go, on to the uh, frame shop to get the bad news. So she does drive pretty nice, I gotta say, although, you know, the streets of Buffalo, as in many uh, towns and cities in upstate New York, the roads are not too great. It's kind of like dodging a minefield, and now I have this news about the frame. I'm sort of, uh, you know, every single little bump, and I don't know how bad it is. I have no frame of reference. So the great dude at the, uh, the shop that inspected it told me, you know, like, ah, oh, just, uh, you know, don't even bother fixing it. Just find someone who will pass it for inspection and it'll be fine for just driving around town. He said, I drove a car with a broken frame for a year. It's no big deal. So that was kind of confidence inspiring. But then I said, you know, I'm supposed to drive it four hours back home. And he said, yeah, well, you might not want to do that. And then he goes, or, or just send it, <laughs> as is the parlance of our times. So, uh, you know, I, I really don't know, and I'm trying to err on the side of caution every time we go over a little bump. Now the Aerostar does have a live rear axle. Um, it's not the, you know, it's not like riding on airbags or something like that. As we navigate our way here through this beautiful Main Street traffic. So I really don't know. So we're gonna try to stay off the, uh, you know, the main thoroughfares for now and take some of the back roads. It'll be a little longer journey. But uh, erring on the side of caution, it's always good when you make an extremely irrational decision to then suddenly be very, very rational, rational and uh, cautious about all your decisions to try to make up for your one terrible decision. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, but just a gorgeous day out, as you can see. Um, all the, the flora and fauna are out, all the flora is in. Uh, great bloom. It's very beautiful. So we're trying to stay optimistic and positive um, as we drive this uh, <laughs> 1993 Aerostar with a uh, cracked frame. All right. Well, we made the journey. Great janky welding. Maybe I shouldn't say their name, but uh, let's pull in here. Park right next to this hot rod. Oh, janky. Pardon my French. Well, if that thing can be on the road, I don't see any reason why the Aerostar can't be on the road, right? Oh, so here we are. Let's uh, 
go see how bad it is. Not bad. So this isn't something to worry about too much, this hole that's punched through there? No. Okay. Yeah, it's funny, because when I bought it, I bought this in Columbus, and I remember crawling under it a little bit and being like, this looks pretty clean. And obviously like, you know, this, but that's pretty much superficial, right? Yeah. It's like she's got a little bit of oil coming off of her. And the front looks okay. Yeah. The front looks fine. No, this thing, this thing here is what, when people, instead of putting them on the frames or, you know, getting them back in here where you got to the solid, they yeah. just put them on them pinch points like that. Yeah. I've heard I've heard these running boards are dissimilar metals too. The running board's different than the actual. So I've heard that. I don't know. I'm not a welder, obviously, but I've heard if there's dissimilar metals, it can cause corrosion more next to each other. Mm, not really. Yeah. Okay. But that just started because somebody, you know. Right. Put the lift on there. Yeah, and you can if you open the door, you can look down and it's all yeah. caved in. To see you this side here, how they just raise it instead of putting it on the frame. Say again? See how this is all bent up? Right. That's because they put it on the lip on the. Yeah, on your the jacking points. Of, <laughs> right, instead of lifting it from the frame. Yeah. All right, well, you've assuaged my paranoia. I appreciate that. I'd drive it. Yeah. You threw away fine, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's not even part of the frame really itself. Right. So, what is, I mean, yeah, like it, I guess the frame wraps around above the tank here and comes down. Yeah. So, this is, what is this just connecting your. All that is just basically more more support for a I suppose a side collision okay but it's right not, it has not to do really it's not really structure. structural yeah that's not see right because this is really what's yeah. structure and I guess it's kind of attached to your suspension but well, you see, that's why you go to a professional, because they know more than you know. Hopefully the traffic's not too loud. I feel completely vindicated in my Aerostar purchase. I couldn't be more ecstatic. Of course, this always happens in filmmaking. Right after I stop filming, uh, he goes, you could race this thing in the Indianapolis 500. And I chuckled and he chuckled. And then he said, the only problem is you'd come in last place. And I said, ha ha ha. And I said, oh, but you know, with this three liter engine, it's pretty peppy and we laughed and we had a good time. And uh, it was just absolutely fantastic. The car just feels better instantly. It's such a, not a placebo effect, but just a mental thing. Like you feel more confident in the car. You feel like you can, you know, you're not gonna, you know, the whole rear end of your car is not gonna fall out at any moment. So of course there's only one way to celebrate this great victory and success is by going to a great thrift store in our great uh, hipster van and our hipster thrift store and our hipster YouTube channel. It's Janky AF, baby. And uh, I'm on fire right now. This is a great, great day. Can't wait to drive the Aerostar home. After this uh, minor lapse and uh, you know, slight, quick, deep depression, I'm feeling great again. And uh, of course I tipped the guy. He said, no charge. I said, here, take this. You guys are doing God's work. People that work with their hands, I have great respect for. Um, and just, you know, his expertise, 40 years he's been at this game. And, uh, you know, being able to give me sort of a clean bill of health and the confidence is invaluable. So, of course, I had to give him a small tip. Always tip your service people. They're working hard for you. And uh, just that little, that little uh, thing goes a long way. I feel like we had a nice human moment together. So ecstatic. So uh, all's well that ends well. And uh, we have the Hero Star here at this beautiful Ambet's thrift store. And uh, until next time, Janky do you think? Uh-oh. Well, I'm now 0 for 2 in attempting to drive an Aerostar back home after uh, purchasing it. <laughs> uh, everything was going great. 
I was like almost home. I almost made a congratulatory video and now I'm glad I didn't. Um, we got the car inspected. We got the sticker on it. It just uh, clicked over 119,000 miles. Everything was going great. Just cruising at 60 miles an hour, nice and slow. Made it all the way down the throughway over three hours. And uh, we had just like a half an hour to go, 40 minutes to go. And uh, check engine light came on and I was blowing out some, a lot of white smoke out the back. Um, this, this big hill here that we come up, uh, it's like sort of the final push and you gotta climb this hill. Now, two things, I did put the car into drive instead of overdrive because I've, you know, was reading that when you're, you know, trying to climb a hill, you don't want it constantly shifting up and down, so put it in drive. I don't think that had anything to do with it, but the check engine light came on, and then it went away, it didn't seem to be any problems. Then I noticed a lot of exhaust coming out, and then, um, so I decided to pull over and now you see, if you can see this, we have quite a bit of a uh, oil still leaking out of the vehicle and maybe some other fluids here. Um, we have a beautiful little trail of oil coming out the back of the car. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't overheating, uh, at least the coolant didn't, or the temperature sensor didn't say it was overheating, but it's obviously losing oil. It was a little steamy in this general area um so like i said 0 for 2 on my attempts at driving it home we're gonna get it towed thank you to the great Haggerty for being the best and i just recently got upgraded to free for free for 100 miles of towing now instead of uh the 60 miles but the 60 miles would have gotten us to the shop so i try to be optimistic i'm actually quite lucky that i made it as far as i did i didn't break down on the throughway so you gotta look at the positives and uh so, boy, she is a beauty, but um, we are stuck on the side of the road in the Aerostar. So, <laughs> what a roller coaster of emotions. First, I think it has frame damage. I take it to a welder, it's fine. And now I did get the oil changed when I got my inspection at one of these like sort of car wash in and out places. I don't want to accuse anyone of doing anything wrong. You think if something was gonna go wrong, it would have gone wrong earlier than that. I hope they didn't forget to put the gasket on the oil cap or lube up the gasket on the oil uh, on the filter there but who knows um like i said lucky i made it as far as i did the great haggerty's coming and my great buddy g6 named after the pontiac which he once drove uh, is on his way to pick me up so i'm very lucky that i have many many good friends who are willing to help out a janky in need and janky do thank you to all them oh boy not a very sporty day for the Aerostar today, so I'm going to unpack all my stuff. We'll get it towed up to the great garage, and we'll uh, keep you posted <laughs> on what's next with my new, new to me, 1993 Ford Aerostar Sport. Boy. Till next time, janky do thank you. One giant leap for mankind.